One of the things that needs to be done if you have ionization in your system is to do a periodic uh, compliance verification. This is based on TR53, which all our compliance verification data is done. I'm going to show you a way to do it. It's not the only way to do compliance verification, but the general principles of what we're going to do apply. So I have an ionizer over here, a ground at work surface that I normally would have. And I have some instruments that I'm going to use to demonstrate this. First, let's look at this instrument. This is, again, a field meter. What's important to note about a field meter is they need to be grounded. It either can be grounded through me, and I'm grounded, or grounded directly through the snap in the back. So, but you have to make sure that you're grounded or that the meter is grounded directly. I attach a plate, and it makes it into a mini what we call charge plate monitor. This plate's connected to the meter, so this plate's grounded. This plate is floating, and we measure the voltage on here. And that's what we're going to use to measure the three parameters for an ionizer positive decay, negative decay, and an offset. In this case, I have it connected to a data logger. The data logger is connected to my computer so that I can display on the screen. However, what you need to do is timing is important. So the positive decay and the negative decay, you're going to need a timing mechanism. It could be a stopwatch. It could be your phone. It could be the uh, clock wall as long as it has a second hand. And as long as you can... Uh, get close to what your decay has to be between the numbers, you'll be fine. In my case, I'm going to use decay parameters of 1,000 volts to 100 volts. So we'll basically start counting when it hits 1,000, and we'll stop counting when it hits 100. And for the negative decay, it's minus 1,000 to minus 100. But first, let's start the software here. But first, we want to make sure the instrumentation is hooked up correctly. Now, TR53 says you should charge your charge plate, and it should hold the voltage within 10% for at least a minute. So let's give this a shot. I'll charge it up. So it's about 140 volts. And we'll see how this goes. So we'll wait about a minute. That's about a minute, and it seems to have decayed a little bit more than 10%. So what do we need to do now? I have to decide, is this decay going to influence our measurement? This is where you have to use judgment. It's very difficult for a plate like this to hold the value for more than a minute. However, if you look at what we charge it up to, we charge it to well over 1,000 volts, almost 1,400. And in a minute, it, didn't, it decayed to a little over 1,000 volts. So the, our timing even wouldn't have started yet. So even though it doesn't quite meet TR53, it's not really going to influence the measurements we want to take. And we'll show that in a second. So what we want to do is now the positive decay and the negative decay. And I put lines on the craft that you can see where the 1,000 volt is and the 100 volts is. And let's start this again. We'll turn on the ionizer. And I'm going to charge this outside the ion band's airstream. And then I'm going to put it perpendicular to the airflow. And you can see it comes out very quickly compared to when I didn't have the ionizer there at all. Let's do that again. You can see it comes down very quickly. And it looks like the decay is two or three seconds, which is probably within the spec. Now, you also want to do that with a negative decay. Let me start this again. That's our negative decay.
And again, if you look, it's probably you know, three or four seconds to go, five seconds maybe to go from a thousand to a hundred. So that would be an indication of probably within spec. Say your spec was 10 seconds, well within it at that point. Now, another way to do the testing, which I like to do, this is not part of TR-53, is most of your components are laid across the table like that. TR-53 calls for the decay measurement to be made like this. But one thing you may want to consider is put it in the same configuration that your part would be. And let's just do some quick tests to see if it makes that much of a difference. Actually, it looks like it goes a little quicker. And you can see those measurements are pretty quick. The next test we want to do is offset testing. Let me change what my screen looks like a little bit. Because in here, offset needs to be between plus or minus 35 volts. The time of decay has to be set by the user or your, the engineer in charge of the ESD control program. The reason for that is we're not sure what application you're trying to use the ionizer for. So you may take a long time for decays, may need a short time for decays. It's not specified in 2020 on how long it should be. It has to be specified by the user. So if we look at offset, offset's pretty easy. All you do is place uh, the charge plate in the ion stream and see what happens. It looks like we have an offset here. What about 10 volts, 10, 11 volts? Well within the 35 volt allowable. Now again, you don't need a computer to do this. I have the screen I can be looking here and I can see I'm well below 35 volts. And that's all we need to do for compliance verification. So again, for compliance verification, one thing that you have to understand with TR-53 is you generally have to follow the test procedures. You can modify them for your use depending on your application. Ionization is one of the things that gets modified all the time because you don't know how your parts are being uh, arranged, you don't know the orientation, you don't know where the ionization is coming from, and you don't know the speed of decay. But this is generally how you would measure it with a charge plate monitor, some sort of charger, and some way of recording the time. In this case, I use a computer, but again, like I said, stopwatch, a phone with a timer on it, a wall clock with a sweep second hand, any of those things can be used in order to determine your decay time.